chapter 20, Collapse at the Center, World War, Depression, and the Rebalancing of Global Power. This is section 3, Democracy Denied. And we're going to look at Italy, Germany, and Japan, and why democracy uh, didn't prevail in those three countries after World War I and the Depression like it did in other countries. Okay, democratic political ideals uh, came under attack in the wake of World War I. Uh, there was the challenge of communism in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, authoritarian, nationalist, uh, anti-communist regimes were a more immediate problem to the victors of World War I. And authoritarian states of Italy, Germany, and Japan... Um, allied with each other uh, by 1936. Okay, the fascist alternative in Europe. Uh, a new political ideology known as fascism became important in much of Europe, uh, 1940, 1914, excuse me, to 1945. It was intensely nationalistic, uh, and it exalted action over reflection. Uh, fascists look to charismatic leadership, and it most certainly went against individualism, liberalism, feminism, a parliamentary democracy, and communism. And many fascists were determined to overthrow existing regimes as they were very conservative, yet uh, reactionary, and celebrated uh, traditional values within a society. So fascism is really the most extreme manifestation of nationalism. Arguing that the nation should come first and any ideology or practice that divided the people of a nation should be violently opposed. Fascist movements were much more extreme and irrational than uh, other parties, which were nationalists but also promoted other ideologies, such as democracy or even socialism. Uh, fascism appealed to many dissatisfied people uh, in all social classes. And the fascist movements grew thanks to the devastation of World War I. It appeared in many Western European lands and became especially important in Austria, Hungary, Romania, and Spain. In even more so, achieved power in Italy and Germany. Um, there's a celebration of violence and a charismatic leader in fascist societies. Uh, most fascist movements actually praised violence as a cleaning force that would root out weakness uh, from society and give men of action a chance to prove themselves. And the parties regularly used violence against their political opponents during power struggles. And fascist states used um, violence against their domestic and foreign enemies. And this created a culture of violence in fascist movements in these nations and central to the fascist movements and parties in the states of a charismatic leader. And these leaders gave impassioned speeches that appealed to uh, frustrated citizens, mostly men, and offered them an explanation for their frustrations. Also gave them an enemy to attack and a movement to be a part of. And these leaders became manifestations of the movement and the nation. And the uh, fascism first developed in Italy. And many social tensions were exacerbated by a uh, severe economic crisis. And Benito Mussolini uh, put together a private army known as the Black Shirts, and he used violence as a political tool. And Mussolini's movement took the uh, ancient Roman fascist symbol, and once in power, Mussolini was able to build state power. Mussolini really embraced the Catholic culture, uh, going back uh, with those traditional values. Women were portrayed in highly domestic uh, terms and traditional terms, and Ethiopia um, was invaded as the first step in a new Roman Empire. And so while the fascist parties called for a revolutionary overthrow of the government, uh, you know, with lots of violence from the party members, 
Their goal was not a progressive change of society, but rather a conservative reaction to the country, to the country back to an earlier era. All right, Hitler and the Nazis. Now, German fascism was more important than that of Italy. Uh, it took shape as the Nazi Party under Adolf Hitler. Uh, many similarities um, exist within German fascism and Italian fascism. And it grew out of the collapse of the German imperial state after World War I, just as um, in the wake of the devastation of World War I in Italy. And um, a new government in Germany called the Weimar Republic negotiated the peace treaty that ended World War I, which the Treaty of Versailles was extremely unpopular with the German people. And as the Weimar Republic negotiating this peace, the Weimar Republic became impopular, uh, unpopular. Uh, traditional elites were disgraced. And also, there was a myth created that Germany had not really lost the war or hadn't been defeated, but rather had been betrayed by its own cit uh, citizens and civilians, specifically socialists, communists, and especially Jews. And by the 1920s, um, there were vigilante groups that assassinated hundreds of supporters of the Weimar government. Throughout Germany, there was widespread economic suffering, massive inflation in 1923, and then the Great Depression. And everyone wanted decisive government action, thus the Nationalist Social or Nazi Party uh, continued to win growing public support. And the Weimar Republic for many Germans was almost like a stab in the back. Um... Germany was particularly primed for Hitler's message as the nation had lost the war and then suffered humiliation with the terms written within the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, while the Prussian elites had started and lost the war, they handed power over to a new civilian government and refused to take responsibility for the disaster. And this new government, uh, the Weimar Republic, it was really built on shaky ground to begin with. It was also often blamed for... Um, some uh, alleged national betrayal of the war effort and really pinned that stab in the back on Jews, socialists, and, like I said, communists as well. And in the immediate post-war period, there were thousands of veterans in the militia groups who attacked uh, the left-wing political figures of the Weimar Republic. Okay, so let's look at this picture, where it originated from, and its purpose. Uh, this picture was on the uh, cover of, oh, I'm going to mispronounce it. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in German. Uh, der, let's see, it's Der Jewig Jude, The Eternal Jew. Um, it's a book of anti-Semitic photographs published in Nazi Germany in 1937. Became a popular image to illustrate the many ills Jews were allegedly responsible for within Germany. So let's talk about the prejudices against Jews that this image is meant to convey. The man in the picture has a handful of gold coins, right? a way to suggest greed. Uh, his left arm, he holds a map of Russia, recognizable by the hammer and the sickle. Um, and it's possible the artist wanted to even underscore that he blamed Jews both for the greed and capitalism and communism in Russia as well. And the artist placed uh, a whip in the man's left hand to suggest that he is seeking to maybe dominate the world. But it also depicts the man as pale, um, almost sickly looking in a, with that exaggerated nose and ugly fe features. Possibly trying to depict Jews as ugly and maybe even subhuman. And this was a common theme of Nazi propaganda. Okay, 
Hitler and the Nazis continued. Now, the Nazis only had approximately 2.6% of the vote in 1928, but that had grown exponentially to 37% by 1932. And as Chancellor, Hitler suppressed all other political parties. Um, he arrested his opponents, he censured the press, and assumed police power within Germany. He su While doing so, he successfully brought Germany out of the Depression, and by the late 1930s, they had the majority support, um, really invoking the rule and traditional values of the German people. So uh, Hitler became Chancellor and immediately attacked his opponents. The German government floundered through the Great Depression, and so there was this desperate search for leadership. And Hitler, despite his revolutionary rants, uh, was legally appointed Chancellor, and once in power, he set about systematically attacking his opponents, uh, amassing dictatorial powers, and uh, completely changing things in Germany. Uh, mein Kampf, uh, the Nuremberg Laws, and Kristallnacht were all part of Hitler's legacy. He published a memoir called Mein Kampf, or My Struggle, in the 1920s. And in this book, he basically de uh, detailed his hatred of Jews and called for their removal from German society completely. And once in power, the Nazi party began to discuss the legal status of German Jews and finally adopted uh, increasingly restrictive laws for Jews in 1935. And the Nazis organized widespread attacks on Jewish communities uh, beginning November of 1938. And while something uh, violent and horrifying was clearly happening, few could have predicted the mass murder uh, to come during World War II. Uh, they used Jews as the ultimate scapegoat for the ills of society within Germany, and thus begin an emphasis on a racial revolution. And the Jews were increasingly, increasingly excluded from public life. There's even an emphasis on anti-feminism, uh, limiting women largely to the home, promoting that cult of motherhood, and having domestic duties. A state-sponsored system of brothels, even in an emphasis on augmenting or enlarging uh, the number of Aryan Germans actually within Germany. And Hitler and the Nazis were staunchly anti-feminist. They believed the woman's place was in the home raising children, uh, even opposed birth control for women, and the Nazi state was very tolerant, uh, yet of male sexual promiscuity. Establishing, like I said, establishing a system of brothels um, and dis, uh, distributing and encouraging um, prote protection, therefore. And uh, Hitler received continual uh, support. And the rise of Nazism is, really represents a moral collapse within the West. So despite the violence and social injustices, Hitler did enjoy a lot of popular support. Central to his appeal was the state's proactive approach to unemployment. Uh, state funding supported massive public works programs that put millions of men to work. And on the eve of the Second World War, Germany faced a labor, sorti uh, labor shortage a far cry from the 6.2 million that were unemployed in 16, uh, 1932. Okay, Japanese authoritarianism. Uh, Japan was a newcomer to the to the uh, great power status uh, globally, like Germany and Italy. Uh, they moved to towards a more authoritarian government, um, along with it, uh, territorial expansion. But there were some important differences. Uh, Japan played a rather minimal role in World War I, and at the Treaty of Versailles, unlike 
Germany, and Italy. Japan was an equal participant on the winning side, while Germany and Italy were on the losing side, specifically Germany. In the 1920s, Japan was apparently moving towards democracy. Uh, there was economic growth, despite the social tension and political repression, there was considerable economic growth. Now, Japan continued to enjoy that overall economic growth, but there was increasing social tension between specifically the poor and the wealthy and the occasional outbreaks of protests and violence. Uh, just before the 1920s. There was this expansion of education, uh, creation of urban consumer society, uh, greater individual freedoms, especially for women, and even lower class movements uh, working towards greater equality. But those tensions of modernization and industrialization emerged, specifically in the rice riots of 1918. Um, as the popular left-wing movement grew, the state cracked down on them and began to enact repressive laws. Union membership tripled in the 1920s. Tenant unions multiplied out in the countryside, and women's movement uh, demanded suffrage and the end of legalized prostitution. Albeit socialist and communist political parties did begin to sh take shape, however, in Japan. Now, the elite reacted with alarm. Uh, political activists were arrested. A few were killed. And the Depression hit Japan very hard. Uh, led many to doubt that this new developing, developing parliamentary democracy and capitalism could solve the national emergency that was taking place under the, or within the Depression. And thus the development of a radical nationalism known as the revolutionary right uh, emerged. And in response to that economic crisis and the perceived corruption of the government, many officers and others, especially um, those on the far right, uh, condemned this new developing political system. And there were a number of these smaller groups that, that agitated against the status quo. And so the right-wing youth engaged in a number of assassination and even a failed coup in 1936. And the situation looked similar to events that were taking place in Italy and Germany just before their fascist takeovers there. And so we see a real shift in Japanese public life in the 1930s. A major government posts went to bureaucrats um, or military figures as opposed to mil uh, party leaders. And the military became a more dominant sector of, uh, of Japanese life. Free expression became increasingly limited. And the government adopted many themes from this new radical right movement. Uh, major public work spending uh, was, uh, was what pulled Japan out of the Depression Rapidly, even though the, the Depression hit Japan hard, they quickly were able to come out of the Depression because of the huge government public work spending. And increasing uh, government oversight of economic matters was also uh, part of uh, the shift of life in the 1930s. And Japan was more, most definitely less restrictive or repressive than Germany or Italy. And that completes section uh, three. Democracy denied as we compare Italy, Germany, and Japan.